Okay, short video on scrapping. First thing you actually do before, I've already started cutting this part, but the first thing you really want to do, damage assessment. This problem here, where the front of the gearbox went down, could have simply been solved by taking like a triangle piece, going from this control arm bracket across the frame here, a couple inches or four inches, so it goes up and gussets that. It'll still bend up here, so you look legit, but you know, that simple piece right there will keep you steering, because even W joints and all that sometimes won't save you. Next time I think I'm gonna, next time I'm gonna notch it right here, make a pocket, notch it out, and then weld, weld it up. Put a little, nice little pocket in there, so a little extra room. This side bent mostly here like they do on this side. Only a little bit here. I did notice because I welded the back up and put kickers in it had bent right behind the control arms on both sides. So I was going to find somewhere else to bend anyways. But I could have lasted a little bit longer if I would have forgot to stick that piece in. My dumb mistake. Everything else is fine. Needs a new pulley. Straight the fan blades, they'll be good to go again. Now, everybody does a little how-to video on wiring. Everybody has their own opinion with best. Some people say no switches, switches just go bad. I'll show you my strain cooler box. Coolers out of a newer GM diesel or big block type truck. Not really big block, six liter or a diesel truck. Those are actually the training coolers out of the radiator. Just two in a loop. Come out here, put little adapters on it so you can split it easier. This is where I mount my switches on the side of it, which will be right next to me. And I know some people say, well, switches are bad and go bad, but having it mounted right here gives you a handle to hold on to. Plus, I have at times when switches go bad, you either carry a pair of wire cutters or if you can make it to where you can rip these off, you can hot wire it. I run a Ford starter solenoid to cut down on fires. This will be the only power wire I got going through the firewall. Even though they're protected, they still get cut as to the distributor. Otherwise, there's no positive going to the starter. Only when I try and start it. So that cuts down on the chances of fire. Even if you don't have a fire and your battery cable uh, gets shorted a little bit, it'll run your batteries down. So makes your batteries run longer. Another tip. When you find a brake booster in a master cylinder that works, and even calipers, because I don't trust the AutoZone stuff, they've always gone bad on me, keep it. I basically have a complete brake system. I don't even bother with the next car. I just put the whole brake system from the last car into the new car. And it, that way you never have a problem. Flux hose, best invention ever for derby cars. I started running an alternator. Didn't used to run an alternator. Just because I've always had them blown off the car. But I've been keeping them lately. So, simple wiring. One wire goes into the firewall. You can either run a switch to turn this off, or see, jump the field across the factory connector and just plug it in. When I, after I start it and go out on the track, then when I get off the track, pull it out. That way it doesn't kill the battery because the alternator field will stay live. The steering column is already gone. That's going in the next car. Leaving the door bars in this one. I got a whole new idea for next year. If you see that bar in the center there, and there's one on this side. Some guys try and run their door bars really low to protect them from bumpers. Uh, so, 
I've been running these and as you can see since this driver's door is really caved in it works great that'll protect you should you get an idiot run into your driver's door it's mounted to both these bars and it's welded to the floor there's my homemade shifter it's a little bit bent up I don't know try and get one more run out of it someday I should show a video on how to make those this one's kind of fancy instead of just being metal to metal it's got brown bushings and everything in it only problem with that is it moves so freely it, it slaps around but most of the time it works perfect you hit somebody in reverse and it automatically puts it in forward you hit somebody when you're going forward and it automatically puts it in reverse with a shifter slam so sometimes it works out great new tip for you GM guys to get your rear end out faster and maybe you should start I would say about maybe just doing this every time now because it ain't taking any strength away since it is such a pain in the butt to change those upper control arms just start cutting holes so you can get to them that way if there is a problem and there's my body bolts I run stock body bolts just take the rubber off use a washer or make a washer out of the old rubber run it through the body and just zip a nut down from the top that's what I've always done and it's always worked for me so I don't see any people do one inch all thread but most of the time that rips right through the body because you end up torching too much out to get it in so what works works Rear end's still good, I'll save it. Plus they're so rare, plus if I break another rear end, since next year is the, the state fair, it's always a three day event. I'd hate not to be able to make it back to the next state for not having a rear end, so I'll just set this one aside and be right, ready to go right in. These tires still hold air. I want to build a new set for the next car, but then I'll have a full spare set if there's a problem. Other than that, like I said, just look everywhere. All sorts of places this floor is damaged from, but this car has been bellied out a couple times. So like I say, one of the first things you do before you start scrapping is checking for damage so you know. Also check for what bolts come loose. That's one thing I've noticed. Is it's amazing how loose the bolts come on these things sometimes. Turbo 400 tranny, I'll have to pull that out. Hopefully I'll have enough time to show you the trick to doing that. Basically, cut the cross member, leave it. Unless you got a fancy cross member, this is just a junk one I don't care about. Cut it, leave it attached to tranny. And when I get the car up on the trailer, what I'll do is I'll actually cut it right here on both sides. The front end's already loose. Then I, that way I can basically just roll the whole motor and tranny with the front suspension right off the trailer. And then just use the winch to drag the car back on, all the way against the trailer. Take it to the scrap heap. This hood has been on two different cars and numerous strawberries. I'll show you why it's pretty dang tough. You can see all the spot welds and also the edge folded over. Everywhere there's a hole and spot weld. Also, these edges, I took my body hammer and rolled them over to make them stronger. Normally they're flat, like this is perfectly flat. I didn't do this one because there's a exhaust hole and they ruined it. But all the ones that stayed good up here, I rolled the whole edge over. It makes this hood really strong. It's a lot of work though. There's a good shot of it. Nice and rolled over edges. And then welded. There's probably 100 to 200 spot welds. Basically all I did, take a, uh, what they call, like a spot weld cutter bit. It's a flat bit that'll just cut the first layer of metal. Just drill a bunch of holes, then weld it right up. I use a plug weld as they call it. 
see my giant hole in the firewall. I did not want to break a distributor. It won't take that much strength away when you get a good door, uh, dash bar in. But there's no way really to take that distributor cap out. You can make distributor protectors, but they can even bend. So and then they get jammed against the firewall, and if you ever have to change the heads, it's a pain in the ass. That's why I quit running one. Also changing the tranny is a pain in the ass, so pretty much don't even do that anymore. Headers are still fine. Finally got a dent in them after all these years. Finally one little dent in them. But other than that, hopefully I can get her scrapped here soon. And get the next car over. And start welding on the frame and building a better car for next year. See ya.